Welcome to another LectureClips.com tutorial. Today's lesson is about a rolling wheel. We have a wheel here and this wheel is rolling along on this ground. And we want to look at its velocity distribution. So we want to know how big are the velocities and accelerations on certain points of the wheel, for example. Okay? The premise, of course, is, as we can already tell from the name, that the wheel is purely rolling. Okay? And pure rolling means that it is not slipping. Okay? This is the definition of pure rolling. You can see a coordinate system here, x direction, y direction. This is the center point, here's the point S, point G. We have a radius here, point A, and this is the angle phi. Previously the wheel has been here and now it is on this position. Now what we are interested in right now is how big is the velocity m of the center point of the wheel, of this point here. First, we can think about how big is the distance that, a, that m has moved in the x direction. So how big is the xm? And first we will have a look at the point A. Okay? Point A was previously the contact point of the wheel and now the wheel has rolled a little bit along and now point A is in, right here. Now this means that this part of the arc length here, okay, from point G to point A, if you imagine it unrolled, would be exactly this distance here, the distance xm. And of course we know that the arc length is exactly r times phi. So we know already xm equals r times phi and it follows that the first derivative with respect to time equals the velocity of m and this is r times phi dot, of course, pointing in the positive x direction. And accordingly the acceleration would be r times phi dot dot in the x direction. Alright, now we are interested in the velocity of the contact point G. We have already calculated the velocity of m, which is r times phi dot, and now we want to write down the kinematic connection of G, which is Vg equals Vm plus Vgm. So, the velocity of m plus the velocity of G related to m. We know the velocity of m already, this is r times phi dot zero zero, if you write, that, write it down in a vectorial way, plus, and now the velocity of uh, g related to m is omega cross rgm, omega would be zero zero phi dot cross, and this is the vector from m to g, so we go in the positive y direction r. And if we do the calculations, we see that it's r times phi dot zero zero plus minus r times phi dot times zero zero. But because of this fact that we have the velocity vm here, we get zero as a result. And this is the first very essential piece of information you need to remember. For pure rolling, the contact point to the ground has no velocity. You can think of it like this. If you take a ball, like a, a tennis ball or something, and roll it along the table, the contact point has no velocity while rolling. But if we grab the ball, okay, and we hold it so it, that it has no angular velocity, and we pull it across the table, uh, in that case there would be friction and the ball would slide around the table and in that case the contact point would also have a velocity, okay? The same velocity as every single point of the ball, because this would be a rectilinear movement. And now, for example, we could be interested in the velocity of the point A. And now we notice that it is very useful to know a point which has no velocity, like the point G. This is very useful, because now for the velocity of A we can write down Va equals Vg plus Vag. And we know that the velocity of the point G is zero, so we're just left with this part of the velocity. And now we have to write it down in a vectorial way again. Yeah, this is what I said, Vg is zero, this is very useful, um, because we write it down uh, by the connection over G, and then we're just left with Vag, which is omega cross Rag. And this vector, Rag, is the vector from G to A, and this is a little complicated to find, but I will help you. Uh, understand it. Now, omega is, is obvious, this is 0, 0, phi dot. Now we have to find a vector from g to a, okay? So, first we have to go in the negative x direction. Let's, first let's have a look at the x direction. Of course, if this is the radius r, the x direction from this point to this one here is r times sine phi, okay? Don't be confused by this rectangle here because here is the angle phi but it would be this distance here, yeah, if you would use this rectangle here, 
and so this is exactly the distance r times sine phi and we have to go in the negative x direction. And now we, we are left with the y direction, so the distance from here to here. We know from m to g it is r and now we have to subtract this distance here which is r times cosine phi. So this distance here is r minus r times cosine phi or r times 1 minus cosine phi. But again a minus in front because we have to go in the negative y direction. And then we do the calculations and we get the velocity of the point A at the end. Alright, and now we are interested in the acceleration of the point G. And this is a very interesting fact. We already know that the velocity of the point G is zero, but is the acceleration of G also zero? Let's have a look at this. Alright, we want to know how big is the acceleration of the point G. And to find out, we can use the same relationship we used earlier, but just with the acceleration, so AG equals AM plus AGM. And now for AGM we have to consider that it is a rotational, that is an acceleration of a rotation movement, so this has a tangential um, part of the uh, acceleration and the normal part of the acceleration. So omega dot cross RGM plus omega cross omega cross RGM. And now let's just calculate this one. AM is obvious because we, we found it earlier, this is just R times phi dot dot in the positive x direction. Here we have the angular acceleration, 0, 0, phi dot dot, cross 0, r, 0, plus, and this is this omega, 0, 0, phi dot, cross, and this we don't need to calculate because we did it earlier, we know that it is minus r times phi dot in the x direction. And if you do the last cross products and sum up, we get the final result for our acceleration of the point G, which is minus phi dot squared times r. We see that the tangential part of the acceleration is completely cancelled out and we are left with this part of the acceleration. And this is the curious case about the point G. Point G does not have a velocity, the velocity is zero, but it does still have an acceleration, namely the normal acceleration. Okay? This is a very interesting fact. The acceleration of G is minus phi dot squared times r. Of course, there's another, uh, there's another possibility to write down the acceleration of G because we can eliminate the phi dot if we use this connection here and if we insert this phi dot squared here, we can also write down a, the, velocity, uh, the acceleration of G equals minus Vm squared over R. So, in this expression, the angular velocity phi dot doesn't appear anymore, but the, the velocity of the point M, this is useful sometimes, okay? I just want to show you that we can write it down in that way. Um, in, in this way as well. And finally, we are interested in the velocity of the point S. And to do that, we write down once again the kinematic relationship we used earlier, which is this one here. We know that Vs equals Vg plus Vsg. Again, we use the point G as a re reference point because, as I said, it is useful because we know the velocity of G is zero. So we're just left with this part here, and this is zero, zero, phi dot, and from G to S we have to go in a negative y direction to R, and this is the interesting fact, the velocity of the point S is exactly two times the velocity of the middle point, of the point M, okay? And of course it's also pointing in the positive x direction. At the end, I quickly want to give you a summary of the most important kinetic relationships we found. And yeah, this is the rolling wheel again. And we have the most important points, which is the middle point, the, the point of the center, the point of contact, and up here the point S. These three points frequently occur in kinetics. And we know that the velocity of m equals omega times r, the velocity of s is twice as big, the velocity of g is zero. The, the acceleration of m equals omega dot times r, the, the acceleration of s of course in the tangential direction, so in the x direction earlier would be twice as the one from the point m, and of course s also has a normal acceleration which points towards the center of curvature, which is omega squared times r, and the, the interesting fact that g has no velocity but in an acceleration which is again omega squared times r, so the normal acceleration again pointing towards the center of curvature. I have not written a coordinate system here, but please keep in mind that the acceleration of g as well as the normal acceleration of s is pointing towards m, okay? This is all for today, see you soon.